Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Piccadilly Sidings. Um, as you can see, there's not a lot happened. The filler is still drying. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take, but uh, I don't want to rush it and I don't want to spoil it. So I'm not going to take any risks. But what I am going to do today, as you just saw from the title, is focus on the bridges and the tunnels. So I'm now going to start developing a fascia to go on that. Now, the method I'm going to use isn't the best isn't the simplest method I should say and yes I could go out and buy some plastic card but as I've said before I'm trying to save on the pennies at the moment it's so easy to go out and spend 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 and then find I've got absolutely nothing to live on so I'm not going to do that I'm afraid so what I am going to do is yeah you've guessed it I'm going to cut out all the bricks and stick them on individually one at a time right I thought I'd show you what I'm doing um as you can see I've done a reasonable amount so far it's not perfect particularly in this area here but i'm starting to get the idea of what i'm doing now um just in the same way as if you if any of you have got real brick laying experience you have to make sure that the lines are straight and you put wire your know, string lines up to help you to get them straight well i'm not going to do that on this occasion what i am going to do is put the ruler in so i'm going to put the next line in and uh, so you can get the idea. Now, I'm going to put a little dob of glue just there. And I'm going to mount in two bricks. I've got a half brick there already. So I'm going to put in a full brick like that. And then put another full brick next to it. So I've got two. Just like that, trying to get them as straight as I can. And then at the other end, again, the same thing. Now, the next thing I do is then take the ruler up against both of those, bearing in mind it's still wet glue, and stick down the ruler with the masking tape. Okay, and then I can fold that back accordingly. You'll have to forgive me for this next bit because I didn't realise that a lot of this is completely out of shot and you couldn't see what I'm doing. What I have done is put glue at either end of the bridge and then place two bricks at either end, enough to put the ruler against, so that the course of bricks ends up straight and level. I'm then placing them on with the scalpel next to each other, leaving a tiny gap, but lining them up to the courses above to make sure that everything as far as possible is straight. But I also I'm making some bricks a little bit narrower, some a little bit wider, some slightly shorter to create those gaps and awkward bits that used to be in the oldie worldy type brickwork. OK. So you might be thinking, well, how did I go about making the bricks pretty much the same? They're not identical by any means and I didn't want them to be, but more or less. What I did was I made a couple of jigs for this. So the first one is a piece of two mil grey board and then I had a, another piece of card over the top with an overhang, as you can see there. OK, then what you do, and I'll show you on this in a piece in a minute, but if you imagine this ruler is the piece of card, you put it so that the, the edge is like that. And then that gives you a pace then to put your rule. So let me demonstrate that. So what I did was I put the rule on there like that. I slid it up to the other end and adjust it. So I'm pushing this way. So I'm pushing into the card with the jig that way, but also pushing the ruler that way, if that makes sense. So I'm pushing the two together, but up against the ridge of the card. By doing that, then sliding it up and down, that then gives you the space. And I'm not going to actually cut this, but then to cut a strip just like that. And that will be pretty much identical on most occasions okay there are going to be some variations obviously then what I did then was I took I used five strips now I just happened to have these left over and then I made another jig which is this now this has got two settings on it something for some completely different but then I set that to five mil from there to there okay and I just made this this right angle so I can put the pieces in and put that sort of up against so I can push against something whilst pushing down on the knife 
I also put that little bit in there because what I was finding is some of the strands were drifting off. So that just helps confine the strands within that given area there. So even if they, some of them do go off at a slight angle, they're not going to go off for very much. I'll demonstrate that. Put that in the camera shot so you can see. Hopefully that's clear. So I put the pieces in there like that, hold that down, and then I cut against the edge just there. Like that. All right. And then you can see the pieces. Now, I have to say, this is a, a little bit of an insane way of doing things, and it, it, it will take an awful long time. All right, just thought I'd give you a bit of an update to where we are. We are nowhere close to finishing yet. But for you, the last clip was a few seconds. For me, that was four days ago. As you can appreciate, cutting out all of these individual bricks... Every single one of those has been laid on individually. Yeah. Now you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute. You've left these big gaps down the side. Well, there's no point in putting it in for the banking coming in, is there? I mean, to do each of those, I'd be looking an hour for either side of that. So I'm really not going to bother. <laughs> right. So I'm ready to start putting these bits on down the side and going around the arches. Now I've cut this strip here and it is 10 mil and then seven. Um, because I'm just following the Metcalf measurements, to be honest with you, and then it's an alternating. So I'm gonna cut them into little segments, five mil high, and then literally just wrap them around in alternate directions all the way around. Well, I can barely believe it. It's taken eight days to get to this point and that is laying literally all of these bricks individually one by one this unit on its own believe it or not took four days to do that and that has taken me two days to do that it's not this has all got to be wrapped around they tuck round um and but tuck into the lining, which is inside there, as you can see. The, that's all bricks inside there. So when it's all painted up, it will be glued so that it looks like part of the same thing. So like this is then the coins go round the corner, like, and they will too. Okay, we're finally on to the painting now. And you can't imagine how relieved I am to get to this stage. It's just taken so long and I've gone completely stir crazy with seeing what seems to be thousands and thousands of those little bits of paper but that's the way it is now i'm using four different colors for this obviously we've got a gray here a pale natural neutral gray as it's called there raw umber and burnt umber but this is the hobbycraft version of um burnt umber but when you look at the two that one is that one, and this one is that one, but I can see a slight difference in those. They do look, they are close, but they're not. This one seems uh, more yellowy, and that one's more reddy, um, in my eyes anyway. But it doesn't matter, we can use it all. Now, all I'm doing here now is literally just slapping on the different colours, very patchy. <laughs> very randomly at this stage it will be weathered so i'm not going to worry now the, the secret i think this is to make sure that you clear all the grout lines you do not want any paint filling up the grout lines at this stage right that's finally done uh, so you can see if you look very carefully you can see the very patchy nature of the brickwork but the next stage is to now start colouring individual bricks. Now, you might think this is going to start looking a bit like a pizza, and initially it will, but it's all part of the strategy, so don't worry. Now, you can use any colours you like, really, but I'm just going to use some of that, which is brown violet, dark rubber, and orange brown. And I've got some desert yellow there. 
and some uh, call it anthracite, I think that one is. And right, I'm just going to start off with this orangey brown colour. Now, I'm literally just going to paint odd bricks here and there. I'm not uh, going in with a pattern. That is very important. Do not do that. If you do, it will look quite strange. It's, like I said, this stage is, is quite important because if you go out and look, if you go and look at your house even, uniformly it's one colour. But actually, in reality, when you go up and have a look at each of the individual bricks, there are several colours in there. So that will do for that colour. Okay, there we go. I just thought I'd show you some of the other parts that I've been doing as well. So there's the bridge, that, uh, the tunnel at the other end with the wing walls, both of those. These are just two of the platform edges. The other two are actually on the layout. Um, but again, all at the similar stages. And you can see I've not gone overboard. It's just a case of just putting on random bricks. If you do too many, it will look like a pizza and it will start to lose the overall colour, which is not what I want to do. OK, now I'm using this stuff. Um, lots of brands are available, but this stage is critical because this is make or break. If this goes wrong, the whole thing's wrecked. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I've got a little pot of water just there and I'm literally just going to put my finger in and take out an amount. Only, oh, bring both fingers up, um, only a small amount. And if you do a small amount at a time and rub it in, you can see the effect it's going to bring. All right, so I'll just keep going with that. Certain bits of it going really, really white because I am going to wipe parts of it up with the salting effect. But I do want to try and get as much of the filler into the mortar lines as I possibly can without rubbing it too much. Right, next stage. But you might look at that and think, oh my life, that looks awful. All the bricks have lost their colour. Were we not? Now, I have ordered some new varnish, but I'm literally down to the dregs on what I've got left. But so I'm just going to put a tiny little bit on the end of the brush and just brush it over. And try and get it to go right into the, the nooks and crevices. Now you can see it's darkening up the bricks already. So I'm not putting a lot on, but just a little bit. Now, when we go in with the null oil in a minute, we're going to darken down these edges around the outside and down here around the sides there. And that will start to give the thing some gravity, if you like. Right, welcome back. Now, that's what I'm going to use, the null oil. Now, I must say, you put this on to highlight the details. Now, if I put that on all over it will just turn the whole thing black yeah you might see some of the grout lines but all the brown lines will be black and the bricks will just turn a dirty brown color so i'm not going to do that but what i am going to do is go around the edges that should be dark so for example around the top there like that and then smooth it in you see that edge disappears so literally just going around the edge like that and smooth it in So I'm not putting a lot on, but a little bit. But you can also notice, actually, I didn't realise this, that the bricks are darkening down a little bit. I didn't think they would. I thought all the mortar would go um, a pale, um, dark colour. OK, we're not far off now. Um, as you can see, I've been around all the edges, down the sides here, underneath here. All the areas where there was a build-up of filler, um, a bit like this really, 
um, but at the end of the day that's going to be covered so I haven't bothered to do that but I don't want to highlight something with a white edge so that's why I've darkened it down to null it down but the next thing I want to do now is to start indicating um, rainfall streaking and all that sort of stuff and particularly underneath um, where there is going to be quite a bit so I'm going to use a bigger brush again with the null oil this time I'm going to put on a bit more underneath the darker areas so where there's a lip put it underneath there like that which darkens things down and then streak it down like so like that and then indicate some streaky marks coming down the building particularly from these areas here where there would be I'm sure some quite significant drip as water would come off the edge of those lips like so a couple more down there a little bit there the whole point of this if you can see that yes you can is to start in the middle and streak like that And I want to, if I do it sort of like that, I'll get some natural runs then. And also there'll be some quite significant streaks coming down here. Oh, that looks terrible. Let me try and tilt the camera so that it because it wouldn't be all nice and pretty in there. It looks awful, if you know what I'm saying. I think it's, maybe somebody in the comments would be able to tell me, I think it particularly happens on viaducts where there's water because of the evaporation of the water. But you, it's, you get all this streaking and particularly the salt effects which we haven't done yet which we will do in a minute so you get the black streaking down like that and then coming down so i'll put quite a bit of no oil in across the top there and then streak it down like that, and just rub it in with your finger okay so now going back in um, so what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a dark grey as opposed to a black. Sometimes I think it's a bit too stark and then literally just do a few streaks like that. What I have, I'm also conscious of is we haven't put the streaks or the, the smoke uh, bit going along here yet, which we must do in a minute. So I'm literally just going to dab a little bit of black around the salting, which makes the salting stand out a bit. It's it's a, a painting trick that you put, when you do something really light, you need to put something very dark next to it to make it stand out. So the dark next to light. If that makes sense. Okay, now for this bit around the, around here, so all I'm going to do is literally just dab that bit a bit darker. Right, it's just dawned on me, um, this isn't the tunnel. <laughs> Never mind. Um, I'll just go back in with a bit of white 
Um, I'm coming, I'm facing up with you. <laughs> Clean the brush out. I shouldn't have darkened these tops down, should I? But never mind. But I'll just put a little bit more salting over the top and then hopefully that will just hide. The idea that I've just plastered it with black. Well, we do get carried away from time to time, don't we? None of us are perfect, are we? Right. Anyway, going back in here now. Now I realise that wouldn't be black streaking in there, would it? It would go back in with the white. And it's... It is, like I explained a few minutes ago, with the streaking coming down like so. It's all to do with creating this illusion, that thing, that water is literally just pouring off. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. Okay. I will just sort of go over the top of that little bit there because that does look a little bit awful. So I'll just streak some white over the top, that's better. Okay. All right, I will put some more, a few more darker streaks inside there. So I'll just go back to a smaller brush. Like that, and just sort of smoothen down with the finger, indicating that I wouldn't find any paint on the brush, of course. Like that. I think I'll call that complete. So I will get the other parts of the um, things done um, in the same way there's a piece of platform. So I will do the streaking down as I've just showed you. A little bit of streaking, not a massive amount, a bit of white and the black in varying places and get those, all that fitted on. Uh, the wing walls, uh, these would be quite heavily algid, I am sure, because you've got the foliage with the grass bank coming on the top. So a lot of that would be quite algae-like and even at the bottom here, a bit of algae down the bottom there, both of those. Um, and there's the other, the other um, tunnel portal, which would have the smoke <laughs> going around. But I pretty much showed you what I'd do for that anyway. It's literally just take the brush, dry brush it on, and then literally just dab the smoke on around where the where it would the trains would come out. I will do more on the left hand side because it's a bigger tunnel portal than on the right because I'm imagining that the services that would have gone through there would have probably been one every two or three hours, uh, whereas in here, they're probably even up to half an hour. So this is gonna be a lot darker than that one would be. All right, so I will get that all finished up now and I'll see you back at the layout when it's on. There it is. So if I take you in, you can see all the salting on the wall. It's a bit difficult to show you up the top, I'm afraid. You can hopefully see the streaking coming down. If I take you up, the inside of the wall's been done. Although this is not been ballasted yet, it will be. And take along the platforms. They're still just the same as they were at the end of the last video, I'm afraid. That's just the way life has been. But you, if I take you in a bit, hopefully you can make out the platform edges. They've been done both sides, this side as well. Take one and show you that. That's all done. And along to the other tunnel. Now it's a bit it's very difficult to sh actually show you, but I've darkened the top of the, the inside here so it's black, so that it the soot would have um, 
Well, you can see the soot really. But that's all been salted inside. It's very different to the viaduct because this wouldn't have the water like the viaduct has. So the streaking is very much more dry and static. Um, I'll take you around the back of that tunnel portal. I've done the back so there is a wall there. So I can put some heavy ground cover along there with some trees as well, that type of thing. Anyway, what I'm going to do next video is to start is to get the platform sorted out because that needs sanding. Um, I do need to put some scenery down here. Um, I'm not necessarily going to show you how I did that because it would be exactly the same as what I did along there. So I'll just do that and show you. But uh, yeah, there we are. There we are. Right, there's a couple of videos going to appear on the screen. So if you want to see how I went about doing that, click on the top one and it will be there waiting for you. I'll see you again next time. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.